the Himalayas. This vast barrier of rocks and ice, situated in the northern part of India, is so colossal that it shapes the world's climate. From the earliest human civilizations, this place was considered to be a sacred place. The home of the gods, an ancient culture. The Himalayas is also known to be the abode of eternal snow. Rapid increases in global temperatures and developmental projects are causing massive threats to the higher Himalayan regions. In the trans-Himalayan landscape, people have always lived with special risks, but new risks are inflaming. Lahore and Spiti is a district in the Indian state of Himachal Pradesh. This area has a sparse distribution of human population, with a density of two inhabitants per square kilometer, separated into two regions, Lahore and Spiti. This steep and rugged mountainous region is home to many elusive species. But due to anthropogenic disturbance and climate change, this area is now one of high conservation importance. Along with the harsh climate conditions, life is hard for both humans and wildlife. Conflicts are inevitable. These harsh climate conditions only allow for the growing of unique vegetation. Scattered tufts of hardy grasses and shrubs that fill the dietary requirements of herbivore species. People of Lahore and Spiti live in very close relationship to wild animals. Ungulates like ibex and blue sheep often graze around villages. The brown bear and snow leopard can often be seen in human-dominated areas. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Though not every story is a happy story.
तो ये स्नो लिपट पकड़ आदमी को तो अटल्टी करते हैं पशुओं को तो करते हैं और कभी तो हमारे खुद में भी घुस जाते हैं खुद में घुस के बेड पकड़ने रात को खत्म करके निकल जाते हैं As a result, human-wildlife conflict has increased. Where the snow leopard preys on the livestock, the brown bear does so on the agricultural land. पिछले साल तो सब का गया, एक का नहीं सब का, सारे का फिर पेड़ पूर्ण के खत्म हो गया था पिछले साल. कुछ भी नहीं रखे, अब जैसे कि दाले हैं, थ्रास्पिन बगैर, राजमा बगैर हैं. अब ये खाली पेड़ है तो उसमें फूल आने शुरू होते हैं फूल समय तो वो पत्ते समय पहले रगड़ देता है बीच में कुछ पौधे कामयाब होते हैं तो वो बच गया तो बाद में उसमें फलियाँ लगने शुरू होते हैं वो फलियाँ समय पर रगड़ दी करें क्या आप पाबंदी है मारने के लिए इनकार है उसका गवर्नमेंट क्लेम देगा फसलों के नुकसान होने जा रहा है बंदरों से रीछ और भालू से ये फोर्स बालों ने अपने ऊपर लिया है कि इसका हम मुआवजा देंगे मुआवजा देंगे आपका फसलों का जो नुकसान होगा उसका मुआवजा देंगे Locals are generally concerned about wildlife conservation due to religious faith but living so close to the animals comes at a price for them On the other hand there are people like Tenzin Dorchi who found their way into ecotourism पहले पहले तो लोगों को कुछ काम नहीं होता था विंटर में गर्मी बैठे रहते थे तो अब तो उनकी विंटर टूरिज्म होने की वजह से काफी लोगों को फायदा भी हो रहा है जैसे कि लोग दिन में तो लोग पोटर बनके स्नोले पर किल चलते हैं जो डूबे शायद हैं उनके साथ। In the last few years, thanks to conservation efforts, sightings of the elusive snow leopard have increased in the valley. Which has led to drastic growth in ecotourism. Tourism, of course, in the other hand, is good. People are saying we need tourism. We need people because tourism can bring uh, some different thoughts and for local people, good money. Increases in unsustainable tourism and infrastructure developments are now leading to habitat destruction and fragmentation. Because of the fragile ecosystem, associated threats such as climate change are now more noticeable than ever. Nana, pehle to panch panch chhe chhe put girte the par, aur aaj kal to kul mila ke bhi to panch chhe put nahi girte par. बहुत ज़्यादा बर्फ़ पड़ता था, तो लोगों को आना जाना मुश्किल हो जाता था। आजकल तो इतना ज़्यादा बर्फ़ पहले से तो बहुत कम पड़ रही है। चेंज होने के कारण से तो ये मार्टर भी उगने लगे, और मार्टर से हमारे को नल्दी पसल मिलते हैं, नल्दी पसल है। पहले तो हमारे गांव में जो ही आते हैं, जो आके लेते However, a 2.5 times growth in the human population was observed from 1901 to 2001. But in the recent past, a sudden influx of unsustainable tourism has introduced new complications to the life of local residents. Due to terrain complexity and harsh climate conditions, most habitats are inaccessible and poorly explored in terms of biodiversity assessment, human-wildlife conflict, and mitigation measures. One team is trying to evaluate and analyze the problem. A team of researchers from the Zoological Survey of India. Jadesai is one of the premier uh, institutions in India, uh, working under Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. It has already completed more than 103 years of its service to the nation. 
primarily to inventorize entire species of animals in the country. We are working on the uh, conservation of threatened vertebrates in the Indian Himalayan region. In this project, we have a four or five major goals to achieve in within the time frame. First is the to assess and monitor the threatened vertebrate species in the Indian Himalayan region. Second is to assess the population viability of the some selected species which is found in the lowland species such as snow leopard, brown bear, ibex, blue sheep and some uh, musk deer. These are the uh, five, uh, four to five global conservation priority species. So we have to analyze their population viability and they suggest the uh, long-term conservation strategy for these species. Some uh, techniques and tools we are following such as camera trapping. First uh, we are placing the camera trap at the different places, different habitat of the species. And these, uh, these camera trapping will enable us to understand the, where the species are found. We also collect the non-invasive samples, cats or fecal samples which is not identifiable in the field. So we take them as uh, the evidences and further we process in the laboratory based on the DNA based identification. The primary objective behind collecting of these species uh, to first assess the species diversity. So what we are doing, we are undertaking the uh, universal marker analysis, we are identifying the species from the feces. And once we identify those species, we use these uh, identified species for generating population genetics of the selected species. This cutting edge of tools by using the conservation genetics and genomics will pave the uh, path forward in understanding the uh, species demography, species divergence, evolutions, and the overall uh, genetic makeup of the uh, threatened uh, species in, in Himalayas. Next is our uh, aim is to understand the conflict the entire the Himalayan region. There is the problem on the uh, conflict with the snow leopard, with the brown bear. In the Laoland Spiti, there are uh, several agricultural land and other lands are being, uh, being destroyed or depredated by the uh, brown bear. Third is to capacity building. Capacity building under this we will train the forest department uh, staff to, cap to train them how to monitor the uh, mammalian species in the Indian Himalayan region, how to place the camera traps, how to collect the evidences for the animal presence in the large species. Involving them and giving them their training will be helpful for us to make uh, solid conservation plans for these species. We are also developing the climate change models of, and predicting the future distribution of the species because this trans Himalayan landscape or entire Himalayan landscape is highly fragile and sensitive to the, any kind of anthropogenic and the climatic change. We are uh, basically working on climate change models. Uh, as we all know that climate change is impacting most of the species which are living in vulnerable ecosystems like Himalayan regions. So after getting the field locations or the field survey data, we are building different kinds of machine learning and artificial intelligence model to see whether which are those areas where the species are getting most affected. Climate change is such a problem which is well studied throughout the globe and it is established that, that animals are reacting to this, uh, this particular phenomena and uh, in the recent past climate uh, vigories have increased and one of the most uh, prominent uh, impact of climate change on the animal is that, that animals are, they are shifting their distribution ranges and of course uh, they are also uh, losing the habitats in the, uh, in the scenario and we, based on our predictions we can say there are many species which will be shifted from, from one area to other area and also what we saw that uh, many of them are going to lose much, much of their distribution range in coming scenario because of the climate change and global warming. The National Mission of Himalayan Study is such a program which is in its, uh, giving a lot of funding opportunities for research projects in working in Himalayas and I would uh, thanks to Ministry of Environment Forest uh, for providing such opportunities to researchers like us who's, who is interested to work in Himalayas for conservation of animals and plants and also for the well-being of local communities which are living in the resource poor landscapes All across our planet, the climate is changing. In the high Himalayas, it appears to be changing rapidly. These changes will affect animals as well as humans, and they will have to adapt. 
But all of this requires collaborative actions between government agencies and local communities. But there is no goal more important than coexistence. Buddhist Shachamaniki teaching, there's, uh, we have this kind of long, this kind of thick volumes, 108 volumes. All the texts you check from the upper to down, there's no single words to harm animals, to harm people. Compassion, love, bodhicitta, human being, animal, all the sentient beings.